I... I have a mouse problem in my backyard. I got myself a mouse infestation. And the reason why I have a mouse infest infestation, or I had one, is because my cat retired. My cat, who is sleeping on my bed right now, she was my mouse hunter for almost 10 years. She was my mouse hunter. She retired in 2021, let's say. 2021, around that time. No more going outside. That's it. She wants to stay in bed and eat and sleep, and that's it. That's all she wants to do. And she sleeps for almost all day. Which is fine, because she earned her purple heart. She killed mice for almost a decade. She did a very good job at it. There were no mice when she was around. Because she killed them. But she's retired. So I decided to get myself some new mice hunters. And the problem is, I didn't realize how intelligent my elite mouse hunter was. Because these other cats that I got are pretty stupid. They go right in the middle of the street. They don't know what the hell they're doing. And I decided that it was not safe for them to be outside. Because, uh, because they're just stupid. They, they, it, it, they're, they're too dumb. They, they may be good mouse hunters. But my original mouse hunter... She was so intelligent. She knew. Stay in the backyard. Don't leave. Don't run into incoming traffic. Okay. So, I uh, didn't have any cats for years, for a couple of years. And the mouse infestation, I didn't realize how fast... Uh, I didn't realize how fast mice populated. But they populate extremely fast. Like, extremely fast. So, I didn't know what to do. I tried traditional mouse traps. The problem with traditional mouse traps is that they'll break one mouse's neck, and then you got 50 more to kill. And then you have to come up with clever ways to deceive the mice so they can fall for the trap. The problem with that is that mice are pretty smart, and if they see one of their buddies getting their neck broken by a mouse trap, they're going to stay away from the mouse trap. So you have to be very creative with traditional mouse traps. Even if you are creative enough for traditional mouse traps, the mouse one mouse ki gets killed by one trap, and then you have to reset the trap the next day, and you got to do it all over again. And you're not even sure if you're going to get a mouse that night. So I started to look into an alternative solution, and I found an article. Written by a woman who runs a chicken farm and who also breeds rabbits. And she said that in the beginning, she ignored the mice issue and they populated extremely fast. To the point where she was not able to breed rabbits because anytime she had baby rabbits, the mice would come and they would eat the baby rabbits. And she said, you, you know, she said she didn't really want to kill the mice, but when you see a decapitated rabbit, a decapitated baby rabbit, she said she decided that she wanted to eradicate the mice. So she found a poison trap called the Tomcat Poison Trap. And this is the most popular poison trap in all of America. It's by a company called Tomcat. And the way it works is... Here's the trap, right? It's a, let me find a better object. Let's say this box is the trap. Let's say this box is the trap. There's a hole at the end of the trap. It's a big plastic box. You put the poison inside. You, there's a hole here. The poison is made by Tomcat. It's almost 99% cake mix and some bittering agent and 0.01% poison. And the poison is a neurotoxin, which fills up the brain of the mouse with water, thus destroying its nervous system and then eventually killing the mouse. The mouse, go, the mouse smells the bait. The mouse cannot, the mouse cannot uh, resist it. It's like putting a cinnamon, it's like a Krispy Kreme donut, you know, with fresh donuts and you smell it, you can't resist it, right? You go in there and you get yourself a donut. The mouse can't resist it. The mouse goes inside of the hole. There's a little maze-like structure that the mouse has to go through. 
The mouse thinks, oh, this is so authentic. This is not a trap. This is so real. It feels so natural. Walks into the poison room. Eats about three or four grams of the cake. That's about that's about much. The, 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 that's, that's, that's about ugh, that's as about as much a uh, mouse needs to eat. They eat the few few grams of, of the bait. They leave and they think that they're great. Then the next day they start dying, and I mean they start dying. So I set up two of these traps. Each trap has enough bait, enough poison to kill about twelve mice. So it's twenty four mice in total. I thought that would be enough. I put the traps out. And the reason why you get the boxes is because you don't want dogs getting in there or cats getting in there uh, because dogs will eat these poisons. So it keeps the dog from getting into the poison because the, the box is pretty heavy duty. But I always put the boxes in places that dogs can't get into. It's pretty tight and uh, it's pretty secure. But it's enough for a mouse to get into. So the mice get in there, they eat, and you know, they die. I wasn't really sure if the traps were going to be effective. Let me tell you guys, after using these traps since last week, they are extremely effective. I mean, they are extremely effective, guys. It's insane how effective these traps are. Um, they are so effective that... <laughs> they're so effective that you'll be walking around at night and you're just seeing mice around you dying. So I became an Arab dictator and I said, I'm going to wipe out all these terrorists and we're not at war with mice. We are at war with Hamas. We're at war with Hamas and the members of Hamas are known as Muslims. And so we're going to wipe out the terrorists. We're going to kill the terrorists, guys. That's how I saw things. And I became a ruthless Arab dictator. And I watched as these mice would be outside, writhing in pain, dying. I watched them. And as much as I did not want to see that, and as much I, as I did not want to do this, I knew in my heart that I had to do it. I knew in my heart that I needed to wipe these animals out. Because if I didn't wipe them out, they would destroy everything. They were and they were using my coop, my chicken coop as a house. They were shitting all over the place. They were trying to steal eggs and they did manage to steal one egg. Yes, they did manage to steal one egg. I could not walk outside at night without a mouse running past me, at least one mouse running past me. I could not walk into my garden without seeing at least three or four mice casually walking around eating everything. I have I literally saw hundreds of beet plants. Beautiful beets, one of the most beautiful vegetables anyone can grow. I literally came outside in the year 2021. There was a massacre that these terrorists did that I will never forget. It was the atrocity, the great beet atrocity of 2021. 2021, guys. I walk outside and I see hundreds and hundreds of beets destroyed. Beautiful red beets destroyed and beets are blood red so you'll see these beets blood red beets just destroyed ripped up from the inside out destroyed all the hard work that i did they destroyed it without compassion they had no sympathy for me they didn't care so seeing my people massacred like that by the hundreds I refuse to let that go. I refuse to let that happen. So I decided to use... I decided to use chemical weapons. I decided to go against the Geneva Convention. Take me to The Hague for all I care. I decided to break international law. Take me to The Hague for all I care. Take me to the International Criminal Court for all I care. I decided to break international law. I decided to go against the UN. And I used chemical weapons. I used chemical weapons. So I set those traps out. 
and the next day, I began to see mice writhing in pain, trembling, the poison, the neurotoxins running through them. I saw the effects of my chemical weapons, and I watched with a callous heart as they died. Because I remember, I remember the massacre of 2021 when I lost hundreds of my beets, hundreds of my turnips, wiped out. Now, if they ate a couple of beets, I wouldn't have cared. In fact, I, I wouldn't mind sharing some of the food with them, but they got too greedy. They got too greedy. And they gave me no choice. Yesterday, two mice, trembling in pain, dying. My heart hath no pity. The night before that, Several mice, trembling in fear and pain as the neurotoxin took over them. The United Nations made a report about it. They said that this man is committing war crimes. War crimes is, are being done. Genocide is being committed on the mouse population. And I said, I do not care. They said, we could have you arrested and brought into the International Criminal Court. I said, you have no right to touch me because I, as the leader of my nation, have a right to defend my people. And in this case, my people are beets and turnips. And today, I found another mouse on the floor, breathing his last breaths. I have no pity. I feel nothing but the sense of victory over my enemies. And later on today, about an hour before I started this broadcast with you guys, I saw something that I have never seen before. A baby mouse walking aimlessly. I've never seen a baby mouse. I have never seen a baby mouse this baby mouse was walking and this thing had to have been maybe a week old maybe a few days old walking aimlessly by itself searching for its mother searching for its father his parents are dead i killed his parents in an act of war i did something that i did not want to do and I looked at that child and I said, I did not kill your parents. Your parents killed your parents. I have no pity because I did exactly what I needed to do. And what I decided to do was my only choice. There is a saying. Violence is only a virtue when there is no other option. And there was no other option, no other option but death. And I saw that child walking aimlessly, looking for its parents, searching desperately for its mother and father. And I said to myself, the poison will eventually get to him and death shall relieve him of his suffering. As Plato said, only the dead have seen the end of war. Mine heart hath no pity. And now, because the terrorists are dead, and I have killed dozens of them, including women and children, my garden is breathing again. The parsley is growing. The kale is growing with lush green color. The red chicories are growing with their blood crimson hue. Things are thriving. The earth is breathing because terror has been removed from the land. 
Terror has been removed from the land by the hand of justice because it is only through terror that terror may be purged. Do I feel pity? No. Did I want to do this? No. But I had to. But I had to. Death was the only answer. And I shall kill more of them. I shall kill more of them until the last terrorist, until the last member of this terrible organization called Hamas is completely wiped off the face of the map of my backyard.